Hey guys, welcome back to a new Friday episode. Uh, this episode is going to be quite more more packed than uh, recent weeks. We have quite a lot to get through. Um, so first I'm going to start off with what happened on Saturday. So that was at DC Fandom. Uh, so we've got two brand new games announced that we sort of were expecting. Um, so the first one we got was Gotham Knights. So that is our new, uh, pretty much our new sort of Batman game that was teased, but without Batman. So that's quite interesting. Uh, so this is a brand new open world first person action RPG featuring the Batman family as players step into the roles of Batgirl, Nightwing, Red Hood and Robin. So these are characters we haven't really been familiarised with, uh, especially in like, the Arkham series and that. So it's really cool that we're going to get a fresh new cast of characters. It's open world so you can still expect that sort of um, Batman combat with sort of uh, been used to over the games of, in the series. Um, so, so we had some gameplay that was nice. We got to see sort of how the game's looking, how much running. Obviously, it looked really impressive. It's so it's still a bit of a uh, long way away. So it's a twenty twenty one release date. Um, so that's coming to all current gen platforms and obviously next gen platforms as well. Um, so yeah, we obviously got had, had a look at that and I thought it looked really fun. So it was um, obviously the RPG factor is not something we're being used to. Obviously games sort of bring elements in, but they are actually saying like it's sort of like a full fledged sort of RPG experience. So I presume we had to customize how our characters look sort of tailored to sort of how our play style is to sort of get that um, skill tree in the certain way we want it. Um, hopefully there could be some sort of player base choices as well to sort of change the story up a bit. So sort of, that's sort of RPG um, factor that's where you sort of role play your own sort of character. It'd be really cool. Uh, and moving on to the second game that we got announced, and that was the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. So obviously the team, obviously who know Rocksteady, who normally make the Batman game, is now working on the Suicide Squad game. Uh, again, on this one, we didn't actually get to see a lot because this one's actually really far out. So this one's a 2022 launch date. Uh, so that'd be only for next gen platforms. Um, so this one, we didn't get to see. We got to see sort of like a CGI trailer. So she got to see some of the Suicide Squad. Um, yeah, she got to see a sort of like a bad Superman fly up, which is really cool. Um, basically, what we know about it so far is that it's a solo slash co-op experience. So... You can play through the whole game on your own with like your AI com combatants or you can play in a four player co-op online. So you sort of get that choice. It's sort of hop in, hop out experience. You, you know, there's obviously there's none of these like um, waiting around in lobbies and such. Uh, they're still not really emphasized if it's like a um, sort of like a live service game as such yet it's sort of looking that way with sort of roughly with what they've said and how they've sort of been describing the game but obviously it's not fully confirmed but you can expect like a fully fledged out um story story mode campaign should we call it so that's something um obviously a long way away yet but i mean they're working on it and it looks really good, so that's something that for Suicide Squad fans especially, and obviously DC to keep an eye on. Um, but anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the event. There's obviously film trailers and such for new films and that that you could all see. Um, definitely give them a check out if you're into DC, because they're definitely worth seeing. Um, but moving on to this week's news. Uh, so to start off, we had the first reveal of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Um, so this is news new series in Call of Duty, so um, Black Ops is back and we're actually going to be visiting the Cold War era, uh, which is a uh, war that does actually get uh, much attention compared to like World War One and World War Two. so it'll be nice just to sort of have that uh, sort of reflection just to learn sort of a bit more what happened in, in the Cold War. Um, so the event was really cool, so the event was actually in Warzone, so Basically, on Wednesday at six o'clock UK or six thirty UK time, if you hopped into Call of Duty Modern Warfare, clicked on Warzone, it was a game mode called Know Your History. So if you clicked on that, it sort of 
loaded you up in a group of four and usually you sort of drop down you pressure you picked your loadout which is a bit more different than usual so i thought okay pick my loadout and then you're on the plane obviously when you're about to deploy and there's a couple of like uh old sort of cold war planes flying over which is slightly different to what we normally see when you're dropping in um so when you when we come and you look at the map and all the titles of all like superstore or quarry they all had like a black line over their names um so sort of unclassified look to it so you drop down then you have four different challenges to complete uh so the first one you had to get weapon blueprints uh so these are these sort of blueprints you had to collect were basically you drop it at like a big sort of location um so we could drop the tv station drop down open chests and you get this like blueprint sort of file that falls out you collect these files and then it obviously pops up of a new location to go get this key so we go off to go get this key um the key was in a bunker and it's obviously the I don't think it's for everybody at this one bunker, but there's the other teams there. But luckily my team was pretty quick. So we got there, got down into the bunker, found the key, and then we had to go out and then we had to get the map locations. Also, we had a bit of a uh, bit of a shootout there with other teams trying to come, so we were trying to stop there and that. But once we got the map locations, it revealed that we had to go to D5. So obviously we looked on the map, we found D5 coordinates, and that actually was a superstore. So we actually travelled down the superstore. Um, it was about a five minutes sort of look around at superstore because we just didn't really know what we were looking for. We just knew we were looking for this weapon. Uh, so you know we we're going all the levels, looking for all the crates, searching different weapons, going out of superstore, looking just at other little buildings around superstore. So we couldn't find anything, and then one of my teammates finally actually found a soldier within Superstore. Um, he was sort of, uh, so sort of where we stack things so sort of high up, he was sort of one of those little levels in Superstore. Um, so if you go speak to him, he actually gave you a weapon and it's a marksman rifle. Uh, I believe it's the SKS as well. Um, so he gave you this special sort of Cold War weapon and it's actually a blueprint you can use in all, all modes in Call of Duty. So it's one of those blueprints like in your armory. So that was really cool too. So, um, it was definitely worth checking out and obviously completing all these other challenges well got you like titles or like, calling cards and emblems and such um but yeah when once like once we had that weapon we had still like a six minute wait for like everyone to have sort of get theirs done and once that done we had a sort of like a broadcast come over and like a black screen a little short little trailer and then basically there's you sort of spawn in and you're in like a the final circle and you've got a stadium in the middle and literally everyone has to run to the stadium uh basically when as soon as you get into the stadium it's like a, it's like a one minute timer to get there and as soon as you get in you sort of go to the middle part of the stadium and that is pretty much where the trailer happens so obviously the whole game sort of goes black and not the actual reveal trailer launches so that's really cool um it's definitely really enjoyable compared to obviously a lot of people are going to compare it to like the fortnite live in-game events cause that's sort of what we can only uh, compare it to and obviously i don't think they were as like massively impressive as some of the fortnite things had but i mean for the first ever one with no server problems and to make it actually engaging with something to do i thought was really cool and interesting and sort of uh just gave you that um I don't know, they sort of want to separate it from what Fortnite does where you're watching something to in this one we're actually doing something and actually earning reward in-game rewards for doing it. So I think that's really good. And of course they're only just gonna get better, aren't they? Because that is only the first one. Um so yeah, obviously we watched the reveal trailer. Um that was sort of like a more of like a campaign sort of story trailer. That obviously looked really interesting. Um obviously there are no like gameplay details sort of like revealed in there, so um did see an R RCXD cards, so obviously RC RCXD cards are back. Um but we did learn out that Black this Black Ops Cold War is a direct sequel to Black Ops One. So obviously if you play a Black Ops One you sort of know the story, the characters, uh you got like Mason, you've got Woods. These characters will be back and then obviously they're bringing new characters in. And they're all obviously um sort of Act, acted obviously the way they sort of you know like last of us and that where they sort of do the acting with all like the facial an animations and that that's obviously all in call of duty as well so all the cutscenes look incredibly realistic um so yeah obviously we got some information outside of the warzone event that i 
thought I'd mention. So the next gen version will run the game at 120 FPS at 4K resolution. So this is something that is massive pretty much for console players. Um, obviously there's a lot of talk of being able to get a solid 120 like locked at 4K because apparently a lot of PC struggle with this. But that, that is something they're aiming for. Maybe it'll be like a 100 to 120 FPS sort of differ. So it won't be locked to 120, but it won't go below 100s or something like that. It's still really impressive. So, I mean, 60 FPS is actually enough for Call of Duty. So to be able to have this extra, I wouldn't say advantage, but just sort of have that extra feature for your next gen version of the game is really cool. Uh, the PS5 version will feature haptic feedback. Um, so it's obviously a controller feature for like the vibrations um, in the controller. So maybe you, maybe the vibrations will give you sort of a the sort of vibrating of the gun. So you maybe add to sort of sense what gun you're using just by the vibrations. Um, be interesting to see how they use that. Uh, both consoles will have zero load times and real life or real time ray tracing. Um, so zero load time sounds really interesting. Um, I don't know how that, uh, that'd be really weird because obviously you're going to go straight into the game, straight into a match, and you'll be straight in. It'll be really strange because obviously we've been used to, remember the old Call of Duties where it'd be like uh, about like a minute, 30 seconds load time. Now we're sort of at that 30 second mark and now we're going to have no time to actually create a custom class or anything. So that'd be quite funny. Um, and obviously real time ray tracing and that'd obviously be like the puddles and the lightning bouncing off and everything like that. All, all to enhance the experience of the game, basically. Um, so the game will be launched on November the 13th. So yeah, we actually did get a date, which is good. Um, and then next-gen versions are available either that date or the day they launch after the 13th. So if the Xbox Series X, say, launched on, let's just say the 21st, for instance, and like the PS5 launched on the 27th, um, you'd get that version of the game then rather than on the 13th obviously and then if like the xbox series x launches on the 10th of november so before the release date you will get the xbox version series x version on the 13th when the game launches um so actually just to clarify on that so there is a standard edition on the store for both xbox and playstation store so standard edition upgrades you free to a PS5 backwards compatibility version. So you'll get the PS5 version of the game on a backwards compatible format. So it won't have all the enhanced features. I just think it will have that um, extra boost to what the hardware actually has in it. It's like all the power sort of just added into the game. So you have a bit of quicker load time than that. But if you want the actual full next gen experience, you'll have to get the sort of next gen bundle i think it's called so basically this is a 65 pound version so bear in mind that the other one's only about 59.99 so it's only about a five pound difference but if you get the 65 pound version you will get basically a free upgrade to the full next gen version with the like the 4k the 120 fps and so on uh so paying that extra five pound if you get a next gen console i don't think it's a massive a massive pain um, you do get packs, so you do get like skins and that with that pack as well to sort of add to that five pound. Um, so obviously, if you pre-order now, uh, I think this is for all all pack all like all versions of the game. So if you pre-order now from the store, you'll get a Woods Operator for Modern Warfare and Warzone, uh, and then you'll get uh, sort of like similar version like packs for when the actual game launches as well. Um, so yeah, that's sort of I don't I don't know that's sort of a pain in a way since other games are sort of offering a free upgrade, um, but then again maybe just like an extra five pound if you buy it on digital may not be the such like the biggest sort of lull really, but I'm I'm down for paying the extra five pound just to get that enhanced feature. Cause I'd rather have the full benefit of my new console than like the just sort of regular sort of benefit for it. Um, but yeah, moving on, we have the multiplayer reveal on the 9th of September as well. Um, hopefully that will reveal a time for the open beta that is planned for this year as well before launch. Uh, so we've got lots to look forward to for Call of Duty. So 9th of September, a couple of weeks time, see some multiplayer. Obviously everyone looks forward to the multiplayer side. 
Um, I believe there could be like a new Warzone map as well involved in that somewhere. Maybe a little t hint at the end, because obviously at the end of this trailer there was like a massive desert looking area where there's like four different vehicles driving around. So I've seen groups of four and that. Maybe it's just like a um, ground war map. But I'm going to suggest it's probably a Warzone map um, in the desert. Something different completely. So that'd be really cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all Call of Duty news for this week. Um, quite a lot, very action packed for Call of Duty fans. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that Black Ops Cold War is going to take Call of Duty to that next level, especially on consoles with the extra hardware and just using that all together to obviously improve the frame rate and everything like that. So you don't have like a, a drop in experience basically. Um, but moving on, so on Thursday night, this was, we had Gamescom opening night live. So this was a two hour show where Jeff Keighley um, went for a whole bunch of trailers. We had sort of short developer talks um, and it, it it was good. I wouldn't say it was the best. It wasn't something that, it wasn't like a conference you'd expect like an E3 from like PlayStation, Xbox. It was sort of like all platforms put together, small little updates, um, a few little surprises that were quite nice and sort of like an in-depth reveal for a PS5 game that I'll get to very soon. Um, so the first game, I was, so I'm not going to actually point out all the games, basically. I'm just going to pick out some of the ones that sort of stood out mostly. So obviously there was quite a few announcements, and they were quite small and not something that's worth sort of going through like an hour talking about or more, really. So the first game I've picked out was Lemnis Gate. So Lemnis Gate is a revolutionary turn-based combat strategy first-person shooter taking place in a time loop. Master abilities of deep space operatives and complete and complete in mind-bending four-dimensional battles. So I thought this one stood out massively because I've never heard of any game like this. <laughs> so turn-based, we obviously know turn-based is like a turn-based strategy game. It's very similar to the like XCOM and that. Uh, we're not exactly massively multiplayer sort of genre, so it'd be very new to me. Um, so obviously, turn based. If you don't know, you take your turn to attack, and then you wait, and then your enemy attacks. It's as simple as that. Um, so it's first person shooters. So turn based first person game is very different to what we've seen, um, and taking place in a time loop. So time loop seems to be a very sort of um I wouldn't say common but a lot more around at the moment in video games so we had um i don't remember the actual name of it so bear with me but there is a time loop game that i did see that was a sort of bird's eye view sort of uh dramatic sort of drama sort of type game where it's just all story based um can't remember the name on that but that that's a time loop game, which is quite strange, and obviously you got Death Loop as well, which got delayed to twenty twenty one. Obviously another sort of time loop game. So yeah, it's quite funny that we we're getting loads of time loop games, but I mean we'd never really experienced that sort of genre in games, so um, it's great to see that they're taking advantage of this and just creating a whole new genre, really. So it's it's better to have more options than to have loads of the same types of games. Um, so obviously. Just playing the trailer there, you can sort of see what, what it's like and that. Um, I believe we're going to get, obviously, more gameplay in that later this year as well. So, I think this game looks really promising. Um, but moving on, we got Ratchet & Clank Extended PS5 Gameplay. Uh, so, this was the gameplay we saw at PlayStation's first party showcase. Obviously, we got, like, a few minutes... Uh, of gameplay within the trailer but this one was sort of like the extended view of like the bit before and bit after that level we saw um the biggest part i've taken out of this actually was that it's actually launching around the ps5 release date so obviously there was no release date at the playstation showcase so we obviously we were sort of pres presuming it'll be like a next year since like games have come this year had a release date but i mean so seeing the extended gameplay like now, you're sort of thinking, well, this game looks sort of ready. It, like you don't see any pop in, it runs smoothly. Um, and yeah, it's coming this year, so that's really good. Um, two Insomniac games for PS5 straight off the bat. So there's obviously 
showing their worth, where PlayStation obviously bought them and they're obviously repaying that favour now by delivering Miles Morales and Ratchet and Clank, new one. So, so yeah, we got the sort of like uh, in game time of using like the um, warp system where you can obviously warp into like another world or warp across the map. Obviously, it was instant, no frame rate drops, no texture poppings, anything like that. It was all like that bang right there um obviously very impressive for the next gen game obviously something that's not we've not exactly seen this gen and been able to sort of instantly travel to somewhere and have literally not no popping or any load times like that so that was really good um i'm just going to play a bit of the trailer now just so you can sort of get a feel of what the game looked like and that and obviously i'll see you in a minute <laughs> that was rather exciting. Gates before a very large octopus. I will never get used to that. Hey, at least we're... So my favourite surprise of the show was a very unexpected one, and that was a Star Wars DLC for The Sims 4. So this is a whole new game pack uh, where, where you're going to be able to go to Batu. Uh, you're going to home your own lightsabers. You're going to meet droids. Um, you're going to be able to do missions for the Resistance, Last Order, or the Scoundrels. And then, obviously, doing these missions, and the more you do of them, it brings you the chance of meeting iconic Star Wars characters like Rey and Kylo Ren. Um, so this is actually sort of the whole the world in Sims for the Star Wars is based on or inspired by the world they built at the Disney World Resorts in like LA and coming to Florida. So you've obviously got the big Falcon ship, you've got all the Millennium Falcons we say, you've obviously got all the buildings like a tavern, you've got like stormtroopers walking around, obviously you can talk to them with your Sims and obviously probably create relationships with them. Um, you can obviously go drinking in the tavern with all like the Star Wars theme music, characters everything it looks amazing um and obviously you can get furniture for your room and that so obviously you can go back to your house once you've visited uh, have all this star wars furniture all the decor outside your house everything star wars related so basically for any star wars fan that plays the sims is literally perfect for you um and obviously it's available 8th september as well so again a couple of weeks um not a long way to uh relate at all um, it'll be launched on the Tuesday as well, so that's just for clarification on that. Um, but yeah, I really, I really think I'm actually don't really buy a lot of Sims DLC, but it's something I do really think I'm gonna get and just try out. So if I do get it, you can expect a review, but obviously, I'll post it on Twitter if I'm gonna do a review or not of that game uh, or that DLC, if I say. Uh, but moving on to my last um, sort of game of thought I should mention. There wasn't a lot to mention, but I thought I should mention it because it's a very big franchise. And that is, we've got new Dragon Age screenshots. Obviously, they've teased some previously, and therefore they've teased some more. No gameplay yet. Um, but it's nice just to see that, yeah, we're still, by the way, still working on Dragon Age. So we'll just give you a couple more screenshots, little teasers, uh, little pictures of the world. 
Uh, obviously, it's looking very vibrant. I don't know how, how many years he's off yet. I don't think it's going to be a 2021 game, so I'd expect it in 2022. Um, it's obviously going to be a very action-packed RPG. You're going to have multiple storylines, multiple quests. Um, actually, a lot of characters are going to actually be like acted. So obviously, I don't know what it's actually called, but um, obviously, like I said, with Call of Duty, with The Last of Us, they're all going to be sort of you know, attached to all these little things around their face to capture their face animations, all their body movements and that. Um, we, don't, we don't see a lot of that in RPGs. A lot of the time, because obviously RPG games are filled with characters and that. You don't really, you sort of just have them sort of built in the game, really. So it's really good that you're going to be able to see all these characters acted out, obviously coming to life a lot more than what you're used to in RPGs. And obviously just showing off their personality and their character, really. Um... So that was really that was really something that's you know we're not quite used to in RPGs. So I think that might take the RPG genre to that next level if it obviously all comes all comes together. Uh, obviously, Bioware's lost lost a bit of sort of um, not the respect, but we've had like Mass Effect Three sort of dropped off for like players who are like or Mass Effect Andromeda, should I say, dropped off for players. I think actually Mass Effect Three sort of did as well compared to Mass Effect Two. And then we had Anthem, obviously Anthem, obviously dropped uh, very low down. Um, fun combat, the, the poor story, and the world, very boring. Um, I do believe you get like an Anthem 2.0 at some point, so maybe, maybe they'll bring Anthem back, but I do think it's a bit, little bit, a little too late. Um, and we did have Dragon Age Inquisition as well, so that's obviously a Dragon Age game that wasn't sort of like Dragon Age 3. But it was like a Dragon Age game, sort of like a spin-off. Um, that I mean, I didn't enjoy, but a lot of people did enjoy it. It got mixed reviews. I think more positive than negative. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a fully-fledged Dragon Age experience. Maybe it'll be Dragon Age 4 or 3, however they want to call it. And yeah, a lot, lot to look forward to there. But anyway, moving on to the deals of the week. So... Deals of the week for this week is Hitman 1 is free on the Epic Game Store. So, uh, obviously we have Hitman 3 coming at the 31st of January. So, it's a fantastic chance to drop into Hitman 1, sort of get a feel for the whole trilogy. Um, and obviously, maybe if you do have a PlayStation, you can obviously get the PlayStation now and try Hitman 2 as well. So, if maybe if, you can, if you've got these different platforms, you can sort of... Hop on these services for free and play basically both Hitman games or Hitman 3. The great opportunity there. And our second game, so our second game I took based off DC fandom. I thought, obviously, that was obviously last week, I gave you a couple of games for it. But I thought, just to sort of close the whole DC fandom off, I thought Lego DC Super Villains for $14.99 reduced from $49.99 on Nintendo Switch eShop. Was just a fantastic way, just in case you're sort of getting that itch for a DC game you might have seen. And obviously, the game was not out till next year, and you just want to have something DC related. Um, we don't have many DC super villain games <laughs> to play, so this one's obviously a bargain for you, especially on Switch as well. So, you'll be able to take it out and about with you. Um, I think I do believe you get to create your own character in that as well, so that's something that's pretty fun. Um, and obviously it's Lego, so there's obviously comical aspects to the game and that it's not a serious game. So it's very cool to enjoy with like the family and friends and stuff. Um but apart from that, that's pretty much everything in this episode. Um I think the Summer Games Fest is sort of coming to an end now. We obviously have Gamescom Daily Show today and tomorrow. Um, and then sort of a roundup on Sunday. But apart from that, that's sort of all the events really that, that are happening. Um Obviously, we still got to have that PlayStation trailer or conference or something to reveal the price and the date. Um, you can pre-order on the PlayStation Store in America to be the or USA to be the first to be able to pre-order. So, obviously, having that sort of coming out maybe hints that maybe next week, maybe the week after, sometime really soon, we're going to be able to pre-order. Um, hopefully, see more Mars Morales as well. Uh, and then we've also got the Xbox, so Series S, possibly what it's called, the all-digital version. We've obviously got that to come as well. Um, 
again, that's obviously not been announced, but it's been leaked so many times. So it's definitely coming. I'm 99% sure it's coming. Um, so we've got that. Probably look forward to this month. I wouldn't have thought they'd leave it any later. Well, September, near enough. Um, so yeah, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you next week.